This is Innovation 2017. It's a week-long celebration of uh, innovation in BT. It's 180 years from the filing of the patent, which essentially led to the creation of BT. What we're doing here is getting together with our research partners, be they universities. We've got about uh, 20, 30 universities here with us uh, on the campus. Our collaborative uh, industry partners, so over 30 to 40, I think, industry partners, uh, some of whom are based here at Adastra Park, others who just work with us, all really looking at everything innovative in the world of digital technology. So it's now 15 months since we brought BT and EE together and you know we have the opportunity now to have real seamless broadband capability whether you're at home or on the go and it's not that far away. As you see here it's it's a helikite aerial platform for uh, aerial disaster recovery. If there is a disaster in uh, in certain part of the country then uh, we could send one of these balloons and they could create a temporary network for people who've been affected by disaster. This entire solution hosts a 4G uh, small cell which has been provided by Pal Wallace. Um, it operates in um, the 21 megahertz uh, uh, band and it's a 4G 21 megahertz which we are using. Uh, it has a 5 megahertz channel bandwidth, so very narrow channel bandwidth. Um, and the whole idea is that um, this balloon, when, uh, when it's up in the air, it connects back to a phaser free 5G base station which operates in the 26 uh, gigahertz uh, frequency range. What it can do is it can move the beams around so that you know, it, it has a direct communication with the balloon itself. The special thing about the base station is it, it is millimeter wave base station so the capacity on it is tremendous. So uh, uh, we would normally use a traditional ethernet cable or an in-band backhaul solution as a, as a backhaul system but in this case we are using a millimeter wave which is giving us in excess of 1 gbps uh, you know throughput on the on the backhaul itself we've got a lot of 5g demonstrations here whether that's the new radio techniques um, mega mimo millimetric wave um, radio systems or whether it's some of the innovations that will find their way into the core 5G standards, things like network slicing. So the way that ourselves at BT and EE look at 5G is in two ways really. In one way it's a progression from 4G, so you know there's 4G, there's LTE Plus, there's 4G Pro and that's about getting more and more bandwidth to you as a smartphone user. And 5G will be the next evolution of that. But then beyond that there are the sort of second tier of things because 5G has this ultra low latency capability, the opportunity for millions and millions of devices rather than tens of thousands. And it's there where we're working with a number of partners, whether those be the Huawei's, the Ericsson's or the Nokia's, or the universities, so King's, uh, Bristol uh, and Surrey there, to start finding the great use cases that will bring those capabilities to customers. This is a pre-release 15 uh, backhaul which we have. So going forward, we would see the implementation of things like massive MIMO and uh, and and, and uh, you know network slicing to come with it. So so that the, on the five G layer, you would have a completely separate uh, slice for uh, for for uh, activities like this. There's a very strong link between network slicing and the whole world of virtualization. And I know you you know we, we've chatted in the past about um, uh, network functions virtualization, SDN, and the whole the whole revolution that's happening, if you like, in the way future communication networks will be architected as they move into the cloud and they become much more software based. Now network slicing in a way is a, a, a sort of an adjunct or an element of that which we're building into the future of 5G. What it will mean for network operators and importantly for customers is the ability to set up service specific slices on a network in a very agile uh, and very secure way. So I mean, the demo we've got here is essentially showing how you can uh, combine just two slices on the network, although ultimately you know, there could be many, many slices on the network, but the two we're looking at are enhanced mobile, mo mobile broadband, so delivering a very high capacity, high quality uh, video, but combining it with a low latency uh, application. In this case, we're using it to, to control a drone, which is quite an, a fun thing to do, but is also um, something that requires very low latency and requires security. And what we're demonstrating is how under load conditions um, you can 
on the slice that is controlling the, dough, the drone, you can ensure that continues to function, even in the unlikely event of an overall network override where other traffic perhaps is impacted. So that's just one simple example. But it's very much the start. And I think, you know, here at the labs we're researching not just the early use cases and applications, but also future gazing into where this might end up in the end. And in the end, who knows, maybe you'll have your own personal slice and it'll just be yours. We're also looking at the whole world of AI and machine learning. And we're showing use cases of that being applied to the business of cyber hunting and cyber security. We're also looking at it applied to, uh, to network operations. And actually, I mean, AI and machine learning is not new to the world of telco. So I mean, BT's uh, been uh, developing, researching, and uh, exploiting uh, AI and, and AI and machine learning techniques probably for over 15 years. So although there are some new techniques and some great new algorithms, new ideas such as deep learning and various topological based um, approaches to machine learning, um, it, it's sort of not new in that sense. However, the recent performance uplift we've had through Moore's Law, uh, giving us you know, compute power and algorithms which are in a new league, uh, is, is really driving a lot of excitement. And of course, the creation of vast data sets, which are really coming from the world of the internet and the web. That is creating a huge amount of activity in the world of research, and we therefore are working with universities and industry partners to see how we can exploit those things. When we're thinking about partnerships in BT, uh, yes we've got the large vendors, but we're also encouraging maybe the middle tier there. And one of the things that we announced recently was a partnership with Facebook called the uh, Telecoms Infrastructure Project, and that is really looking, and with a UK partner, we're using this location here at Adastral Park and a location in London to encourage startups to come and innovate around underlying network technology, because I'm pretty certain there are some new things we can invent there. One of the things that we are looking at, and it's in the context of the universal service commitment that we're talking to government and others about, is you know, where is the economic to reach with fibre or a mixture of fibre and copper? And we still think that that applies to 99% of the UK. So the UK will be at 95% by the end of this year. Uh, so the 4% to go to get to 99%. Beyond that, you know, the technology at the moment is starting to favour mobile, fixed, fixed wireless broadband. And then also there's the challenge of how do we get from super fast to ultra fast. And we've committed to 12 million homes with ultra fast, so greater than 100 megabits per second uh, by 2020. That will be a mixture of fiber to the home and also a technology called GFAST, uh, which is the ability to get really ultra fast uh, data capability down that last small amount of copper. We've had a decade here in the UK of 50% compound annual growth in the traffic on our network. That's brilliant because it means all our customers love the stuff that goes over our networks. What that means over the next decade, of course, is that our core network needs to be about 60 times bigger, right? So that's a challenge. The technology that's going to allow us to gracefully evolve the optical fiber bedrock that underpins that is coherent optical super channel. And what we were talking about today is really a continuation of work that we, uh, with our partners Huawei, and to be fair, other labs across the world have been pushing in the last few years, which is divining new ways to get more information onto that good old optical fiber, pioneered here at BT Labs Martlesham in the late 70s and early 80s, to get more capacity into that single mode fiber. The stuff we were talking about today is quite exciting. It's 400 gigabits on a single carrier. Uh, it tells us that an e each fibre would be able to support something like 13 terabits per second, which would mean today, for example, if I were foolish enough to do this, I could carry the entirety of the UK core network traffic on a single fibre. We wouldn't do that for resilience reasons, but you get the point. It means we've got the headroom going forward that as we eye that growth in capacity, which is going to continue, we've got ways and means of being able to deal with that. And the physics is coherent optics combined with really you know, very high quality uh, carrier grade equipment that means we can gracefully evolve the core.